What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fancy Fitness. So Texas Pro and France Pro, they became the most predictable shows of 2024. And I'm gonna add Italy Pro in there as well. And we all knew the results of these shows before they even happened. Because Andrew Jack dominated in Texas and Samson Dauda won the show last night hands down. So the scorecard of France Pro is also out. And Samson Dauda gets his Olympia 225 qualification as easily as it was expected. Now as far as that narrative is concerned, that him doing France Pro just two weeks prior to this year's Miss Olympia. That is gonna be a total gamble. Well, it did not turn out that way. This will not impact Samson's Olympia prep, even in the slightest possible way. I think this in fact is gonna help him, because you can say whatever you wanna say about his look. But I think he looked in a great condition for two weeks out, for this year's Miss Olympia. And we just saw at this year's Arnold, how drastically he was able to improve, from this year's Arnold Ohio, to the Arnold UK in just one week. So we should expect that same thing to happen for this year's Olympia as well. He is gonna show up a lot more sharper and a lot more conditioned for this year's Olympia. And it is an absolute guarantee that he's gonna be more separated and more detailed in two more weeks for that big dance. So everyone out there was appreciating the way his waistline and his merch section was looking for this show. Plus his merch section control was also spot on for this year's France Pro. And now that some more footage is also out, especially from the backstage, where Samson Dada is flexing, this gives a more clear picture of how good Samson was looking for this show. I mean his front double biceps has never looked this aesthetic. His arms this time were looking bigger. He had a more taper down waistline. And we have to keep in mind, he has two more weeks to tighten things up even more. And you have got to give the credit where it's due. Samson's current coach, his wife, she has done a superb job with Samson Dada so far. And the good thing is that they did not even try any drastic measures in terms of that peak week protocol and he still destroyed the whole competition. So Samson Dauda is gonna be back to UK today and he's gonna be right back on track for this upcoming Miss Olympia. All right, uh, Mel, you just uh, won a pro show and qualified for the 2025 Olympia. What do you have to say? Where's your, hey, you miss, you miss your middle. Here's your middle, here's your middle, here's your middle. Here's your middle. Yeah, you just, you just killed it. You just wrapped it. See? Cool. See? Now I don't have to divorce you now for not doing the job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. So, off the stage and... Uh, we just got me something to eat real quick before, before heading back to the hotel. We got a quick drive back to the UK first thing in the morning. So this is, uh, it's already late here in France. It's about to turn 11 p.m. So yeah, time time is against us. But man, what a fun show that was. That was so much fun. Now I have to say, you have got to feel for Andre Presley here. He has now got three Royal placings in a matter of a month. And it became so unlucky that he had to battle Hunter Labrada in Italy and Samson Dauda in France. And then that loss to Bruno Santos at Europa Pro this year. That must have been so hurtful. So Theo Laguerre plays third here in France. So it's safe to say that he isn't going to be a top 10 guy at this year's Miss Olympia. And Presti beating him in France. That is a proof that Andrea Presti is one of the best bodybuilders from Europe. Now let's take a look at the other Olympia 225 qualifier. The Legion Sports. Where Brett Wilkin and Bruno Santos battle it out for the Olympia qualification for 2025. So before breaking it down between these two guys, I want to mention that there were two more multiple time Olympians in this lineup at the Legion Sports. Justin Rodriguez and Patrick Moore. And both of these guys have placed top 10 at one point in their career. And guess where both these guys ended up? Here in Legion Sports, in the third call out. So this was the second comeback show for Patrick Moore. He finally got that big off season that he always wanted, but he just could not have it in the past because he had all this pressure from his sponsors to compete more often in the year. And in terms of placing, this offseason did him absolutely no good. Two extremely poor placings for Patrick Moore in a matter of just two weeks, but he wasn't even able to place top five in either of these shows. And I have no idea what to say here. Maybe his body isn't designed to be that big so that he can live up to the men's open bodybuilding standards and compete with the best of the best in the men's open. Now he looked really great at this year's Europa Pro especially in terms of conditioning. He was absolutely spot on. But even that wasn't good enough to place top 5 in that kind of lineup. So as far as Justin Rodriguez is concerned, I have to say his good days as a, as a men's open competitor, they are for sure behind him. His downfall started 
back in 2022 after he parted ways with AJ Sims. So both of his looks, back in early 2022, the Arnold Classic and the Boston Pro, they were some of the best of his career. But after that, he has been on a steady decline and he just hasn't been able to bring his physique back to life after that point. Now no one is gonna ask him to retire. I mean that is totally up to him. We have no right to ask him that. That decision is entirely up to him. But at this point in his career, he isn't getting any better. No matter what coach he is choosing to work with, now he can compete for as long as he wants to. Because he just loves to compete. But I don't think he will ever step back on the Olympia stage. So now Brad Wilkin versus Bruno Santos. So Matt Jensen and Brad did their job. And can someone please tell Bruno Santos to stop pointing towards his glutes every time he's about to hit that back double biceps and the back lat spread. I mean the guy standing next to Brad Wilkin, whose glutes are more ripped and they are more shredded. And I have absolutely no idea why he's asking the judges to notice his weakness, especially with an experienced guy like Milo Sorsev in his corner. So was it close between Brad Wilkin and Bruno Santos? I'm gonna say not even slightly. Brad Wilkin was just in a far better condition and he was more polished overall. He had better physique, he had better flow, he had amazing aesthetics. So the difference between these two, not only just in terms of conditioning, but in terms of size as well, from the back, especially the hamstrings, that was just so evident in those back shots. Now Bruno might have looked a bit more fuller, especially in some of the front shots, and he had a bit more weight in that front double biceps and the front large spread. But Brett just had more separation and more detail in his lower half compared to Bruno. So this was a very long prep for Brett Wilkin and the dream team of him and Martin Fitzwater. They are like the Johnny Jackson and Branch Warren of this era. So their training camp together, that just paired off big time. And Brett has got a head start for the Olympia 225 by securing the Olympia qualification at the earliest possible point in the year. So this is the exact same pattern that happened back in 2022 at the Big Man Weekend when he won the Olympia qualification for 2023 at the earliest possible point and he had an entire year to get bigger to grow for his Olympia debut next year. But unfortunately that just did not happen. So hopefully we will see him on the Olympia stage next year. Bigger and better than ever. Also a congratulations to Bruno Santos because what an incredible year he has had so far. He plays third in Italy, first place in Europa Pro and second place here in the Legion Sports. So it's time to dial it in for his Olympia debut in two weeks. Michael Dabur going for his 8th pro win at this year's Legion Sports. That was another big story from last night. And he got his 8th pro win. But this time it was an Islam dunk. Like it was last weekend. As there was just one point separation between him and the second place finisher here, Emmanuel. But this is how great Michael Dabur really is. He was fighting his stomach pain throughout the day as well as vomiting. And that kept on happening until showtime. So he just could not carve up at all. But still somehow he managed to pull a win here. And that is just unbelievable. So I guess him being at even 80%. That was still good enough. To beat all these guys. And win another show. So Michael Dabul is on a roll here. And I firmly believe. That he can become the Daxter Jackson of classic physique. If he continues to stack up multiple pro wins. With every passing year. His conditioning during the finals was just impeccable. And that gave him the edge. So Michael has got two more weeks to bring a far better package for this year's Mr. Olympia. So he was top 6 at last year's Mr. Olympia. And the least he wants to place is top 6 once again. So you have got to give him the credit for competing this close to the shoe. And not just once, but twice. And I'm sure none of the other first call out guys, they will take that kind of risk. And all of them are absolutely ready as well. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.